stories from other change makers designed to motivate you to become the change you want to see in your world. Make sure you join our change makers community at dunamahmus.com forward slash podcast. And now it is time for you to sit back, relax, and then be a one with today. It's no other than the co creators of the Network for Transformational Leaders. She is the woman behind Kitty Talks. She is the inspiration per excellence. She is the woman that has, well, I think actually now that I think about it, she's transformed my life because she, in, she uh, introduced me to a group of people that are today one of my dearest closest most loving friends that i have ever experienced in my life i would like to introduce to the change makers podcast the one and only kitty waters good morning oh i got goosebumps when you were talking i love it soul family Rina. that's what you found you found your soul family of oh, soul family exactly <laughs> and you're right soul family and what a privilege and how how important it is that every single person on this planet can find their soul family in one way or another. And that's what I think is so beautiful what you're doing, Kitty, in your life's work being, you know, your mission is to inspire people to follow their passion and purpose and make a difference on this planet. And hey, that's what you are doing. Mm, Well, definitely. I think when we do our Dharma and we follow the flow of life, you know, life opens up and it totally changes. And so, yes, my mission is to inspire other people to do that because it's a beautiful way of living. And I didn't do it for so long, you know, (laughs) so it took me a long time to learn. Well, what was the turning point for you? Drug and alcohol addiction breakdowns (laughs) breakdowns <laughs> I kind of really, really so funny I really can't see you with in that I can't even picture you in that field really with drug and alcohol maybe, maybe alcohol but no. <laughs> <laughs> Red wine no that was a joke <laughs> I was just looking for connection in all the wrong places I think mm. um, I'm sure many people can relate you know in my 20s I was in a high performing job and um, was one of the boys rather than being a girl and I used alcohol and drugs as a bit of a crutch because I didn't feel very confident in myself. Hmm. Uh, and deep down, I wasn't doing the work I was supposed to be doing. Um, and I think that's what the crux of it is. And I think, you know, I always knew I was here to do bigger things and I was fulfilling or filling the gaps. You know, I, I'm sure people can relate who have listened, but when you do do drugs and things there's a sense of kind of like euphoria that you get from that and obviously now I know that you can get that euphoria from meditation from creating a life that actually is in alignment with who you are and what you should be doing Mm. but back then I was you know that wasn't the way I handled things or did things um but it taught me you know taught me many valuable lessons actually and I wouldn't change it for the world so I mean what turned it around for you why did you stop it Well, it took me, you know, literally when I say my 20s, because I think I had a nervous breakdown in my early 20s, continued living that same way. Like you wouldn't have known if you, you know, only inwardly I was dying, you know, externally I looked quite happy and, you know, got myself into very much of a binge drinking culture, um, drug and alcohol culture. So actually I could hide in that culture because everybody was doing it and actually, especially in Britain, it's quite a British, you know, thing, Friday night down the pub etc mm-hmm. etc but the turning point for me came um, my mum suffered with very bad depression and actually it was a genetic patterning actually it was what I know now is that we had a real history of a bipolar and depression in the female side of our family and I'd learned a lot of those behaviors like I internalized my emotions I didn't express them mm-hmm. and I think my mum internalized her emotions and she spiraled downward into very bad depression mm-hmm. and actually got to the point where she tried to commit suicide um, and the turning point for me was actually finding my mom. She'd gone missing. Um, but I, my sister and I went to look for her and I found my mom and I was very much guided, um, through voices in my head mm. to where she was. And I'd obviously never had an experience like that ever before. I'd never had that sense of connection before. And I think that was what something also was missing. I was looking for it in other places. Yeah. But to give you kind of the short version, you know, I was literally had a voice in my head telling me where to go. You know, she was lost in some woods. 
and I literally got guided to where she was. And as I was running for the ambulance, you know, to help her, I remember I, I was smoking, I was drinking, I was doing drugs, I was overweight, I was unhappy, I was unhealthy. And I remember running for this ambulance, kind of all huffing and puffing, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, oh my God, I've got to go, you know. And I just remember having a conversation with the mate, with my maker and saying, I'm, I don't want to live like this. I'll do anything you want me to do. You know, I really don't want my life to be like this. I promise to turn it around and change. You just help my mom type thing. Yeah. Um, and, you know, after that experience, you know, the police report, my mom is you know, healthy and well, and she's reconnected to her emotions and she's much, you know, much healthier emotional life now. Mm. Um, but that sent me on a, I suppose, down a rabbit hole of spirituality and personal development, mm -hmm. which was really the big turning point for me because I just wasn't going to live life like that anymore and I need, needed to find a way out. Yeah. So slowly but surely I did. I, you have to change your life. You know, if you're surrounded by people who have been drinking, you just have to remove yourself from that environment. And I started to make friends outside of that environment. I joined a personal development group called the Yes Group. And, you know, for the first time in my life, I had people that didn't, go and binge drink at the weekend or you know and then um, I literally uh, changed my life and I shifted my surroundings and I shifted my network mm. and this is why networks are so important to me now and obviously you and I are in the part of this network for transformational leaders and who you surround yourself with is really really who you become so for people listening if you're not happy and satisfied with your life I really would advise you to start making friends outside of maybe your current environment you know go towards things that light you up go towards things that interest you find people that are doing the things that you are excited by and that's what what I did you know I found out about <clears throat> the Transformational Leadership Council which was obviously in America started by Jack Hanfield in 2004 and to me it just sounded like the most amazing organization it was where they filmed The Secret the 24 Teachers in The Secret came from the Transformational Leadership Council And it was like somebody put a light bulb on in my soul. I was kind of like, oh, okay, I want to create that and bring that to Europe. And obviously following my highest excitement, which is what I teach now, you know, I got really excited about the idea and I wanted to do it and I followed that. And that's how we get onto the path of Dharma. You know, our path of right action is by following our uh, highest excitement. Our highest excitement. And I know that I love that expression. For me, you're a change maker, and what you just explained and what the, your story really tells me that you found a path to change your life, and now you're changing other people's lives with uh, sharing kitty talks and and sharing all these amazing stories that you do in your pod, in your own podcast, which are quite life changing stories. I also know that you have a magical way of manifesting things. Yes. <laughs> So I mean, yeah. You, I mean, you say, yeah. Follow your, follow your bliss. Follow what you're passionate about, your passion and purpose. And you say that, and I, and I think many people they do go, yeah, yeah, of course, but they have no idea what that is. Or, well, yeah, I'd, I'd love to caveat that because this whole follow your highest excitement, follow your bliss is available for everybody. You know, we, we, depending on what you believe, I believe we all came down for a reason. You know, our souls chose the journey that we are on. Hmm quicker we get onto what we call our dynamic path, the quicker things change. And this is available for everybody. This is not just for me or for Runa, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's every single human being has a unique set of gifts and talents that they came down with. You know, there's, there's 7 billion people on the planet. There's nobody exactly the same as you. Even if you're a twin, you're an identical mm -hmm. twin, you're still slightly different, you know. Yeah. But the trick is, is to find the path of right action. And that's something that, is only you will know because it is the thing that really lights you up. And it's usually the thing that is of maximum benefit to the individual, but also to creation. Um, so for people listening and they're sort of thinking, oh, I don't know where to start, you know, just, it's like a breadcrumb trail. You know, you're not going to get a download and say, this is why I'm here. It doesn't work like that. You know, all that happens is you follow the breadcrumbs. So in any given moment, what is it that you feel like doing next? You know, Do you get excited about it? If you feel like, oh, I'm going through the motions and I don't really want to do that, but I have to do it, mm -hmm. that's the wrong way. You know, use the highest excitement like a compass. Mm. And just get in the practice of literally in a day-to-day -day basis, you know, following what it is that you want to do. And it gives you excitement. And that's the kind of shift in how we live. And 
we've been really conditioned as a nation to, I suppose, think think too much and not follow our hearts, not follow our intuition. And one of the things that we're doing with Kitty Talks is we've, oh, I've interviewed 70 thought leaders now and distilled the key six principles of things that these thought leaders do and turn them into a course that we're going to be launching later mm. um, to teach people how to undo and you have to kind of unlearn what you've been taught and conditioned and then relearn the new paradigm way of living. Yeah. But yeah, so it's exciting. It's, it's really exciting. And then I suppose that, comes on to what you were talking about with manifesting as well so yeah and yeah i can see that but one of the things that and i think this is following that less and following following what you feel you're supposed to be doing and you and getting there is i think it's a privilege actually being able to to know that and i'm very i'm like you passionate that people can do that and i believe i'm i'm on the same path i believe each and every one of us has a purpose has there is something that our soul is supposed to be doing i agree with you and I like how we say that often what i notice myself and i want to ask you this question do you see people being really clear on what it is that they want in their life mm, no not at all and i think um that's where people get a little bit bamboozled with the discussion of passion purpose yeah. you, know, for, you know why am i here it's a big conversation and it's a scary one because people yeah. go oh i don't really know where to start so i'm just not going to start at all yeah yeah. And I think that's what, what we try and do with Kitty Talks is break that down because mm-hmm. actually there's a few fundamental things. Like one of them is literally in any given moment sitting and just working out what do I want to do next and what, what am I drawn to? Mm-hmm. And that may sound really simple and really obvious, but most of us do live in our little hamster wheel and we kind of, and that's, you know, you have to break out of that cycle and that is difficult, but you can still do that. So whenever you do have free time, where do you want to be putting your free time? You know, we also highlight kind of celebrities on Kitty Talks who have just done exactly that. You know, they might have a passion. Deliciously Ella, you know, she ended up having a, a quite a bad um, food problems and she was so bad, so much so she was in hospital and she kind of ended up in bed because she couldn't get out of bed and she slowly but surely changed how she ate mm. and did that to heal herself. And then from there, it's opened up this huge career for her. Mm. So sometimes maybe we're, even when we're in the bad times that can be our turning point you know so yeah um, I yeah. think for people listening try not to, to get too overcomplicated or overcomplicated just try to not have all the answers but in any given moment try and do what it is that you really want to be doing what excites you and that will lead you to the part dharmic path yeah yeah um, yeah I, I agree with you there it's like the, do the things that are least resistant thing and that is the given yeah, yeah. I love that. And it might not be it might not be logical. Like you might want to go for a walk. That might be yeah. the thing you really want. Yeah. And you know, when you go for a walk, you might bump into somebody you hadn't seen for ages who then says, Oh, how about coming to this? Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah. So you never know. You never know. You just exactly. don't know. So just yeah. Yeah. and be nice to yourself as well, because I think that's the other thing we tend to do. We tend to beat ourselves up when we don't really know what we're yeah, doing. You're right. But tell me another thing. I know, like I mentioned with uh, when it comes to manifesting. And manifesting yes. what you want. And then and let's say, let's put up a, a scenario. You are a, a manager or you're leading a team or you're managing a team and you want, you just, you're looking at it, your team, and there's a certain thing that you need, you see that you need in order for the team to be fully functional. Let's put that as a scenario. You then say to yourself, I need a member in my team that has the ability to do x whatever that is do you want to fill in the x um yes so if you're talking about manifesting a team member or Mm, yeah recruiting somebody into your business i think it's really important that you get real clarity you know like when people write job specs basically what they're doing is they're kind of manifesting they're writing down all of the traits all of the skills all of the ideal things that they want in an individual. Yeah. But you can go a step further than that. Like, you know, a job spec is a really good start because all the criteria that a person will need to have. But actually, depending on your business, like, I don't know if you've got a lot of entrepreneurs listening, but you might want somebody who's more freelance, more flexible. Um, mm-hmm. But you can get, you just have to get really clear, like, on what that individual looks like, 
how they operate, what their values are. And then the key thing I think is then to tell everybody, <laughs> you know, utilize, go through your, go through your network. Like I'll give an example of another change maker who I know you've interviewed, Margareta. Hmm. We were working together and she was looking to bring somebody into her team. And that's exactly what she did. She got really, really clear on who she was looking for, what she wanted. And she told everybody in her network. And actually that's how the individual perfect individual literally mm. turned up um but i think that the next step in a business is to utilize your team as well mm. so you get clear you get clear with the team about the person that they want and then enroll the team into finding that individual because the more energy you put out into the universe the more people you enroll into what you're trying to achieve the more energetic force goes out to pull pull that person in yeah, you don't have to do this alone. No, you don't have to do this alone. That is how fantastic. Powerful. Yeah, how powerful is that? You can actually involve everyone else in the team and, and let them be part of the making of that ideal team member so that everyone feels that they created that one. Yeah, they belong to that one. Yeah. Exactly, and then they feel, you know, they feel much more enrolled in it, don't they, for part of it. Yeah, yeah. So, again, we're always coming up to the same thing communication and communicating and telling people and creating the space where people can create together what they want to have in their lives. Oh yeah, that is a big one. What else could you do in manifesting the right team member? Uh, in manifesting the right team member? Um, well, as I said, utilizing all the people in your environment, but not just all the people at work, probably even in your home life as well. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't really know. I can, when you're manifesting, you people get too. You can get too specific. So you might think something's going to come a certain way, and actually, the universe has got bigger, better plans. You never know yeah. where it's going to come from. So don't just don't just utilize the work people. Utilize people in your home life. So it could be talking to somebody at a party, or it could be going out for dinner. You know, it doesn't have have to come through the work environment it could come from the home environment so look at everybody you meet <laughs> as a potential source because really when we're manifesting the action is the key thing we don't know how the universe is going to respond to that you know like myself when I was before I met my partner I was dating and I didn't really know where you know the potential partner would come from so as well as using dating sites i was using all my friends i was asking you know literally everybody who could get my hands on that i could ask um, and then just keep it keep it kind of in the forefront of your mind like again there's a kind of fine line between getting too attached to something um so we were talking just before we came on air about how you can utilize um reminders in your daily life so you could put a note in your diary yeah. that flashes up to say um, recruit this person or you know, talk to other people about this. So, it keep, so you, you keep thinking about it. You don't completely let it drop. Yeah. Um, you keep it in the forefront of your mind because that's the other thing that's important is that we are, it's almost like watering a plant when you're manifesting. So you wouldn't water a plant 24 hours a day because you'd drown it. Yeah. Um, but you would do it every now and again to keep it healthy. So it's the same thing with manifesting. And probably what you'll find when you least expect it is when it will come yeah because you'll have it won't be in your you'll have let go of it and you'll have no resistance to it you won't be hanging on too tightly to it and that's probably when it will come in this is what happened to me yesterday because I'm doing the same with my team yeah and I've been telling people and I've been getting clear about it and I've written it down and I know the type of woman I want I've, said, I've got specific it's a woman I know what I want to pay and I'd forgotten about it actually <laughs> and yesterday I went for a breakfast meeting and I was telling some this lady my kind of ideal and she went oh yeah I know the perfect person yeah exactly I love that that's beautiful that's beautiful Kitty I think what you're doing with Kitty Talks and and uh, helping being on that mission to inspire people to follow their pa passion and purpose and making a difference in the world is so valuable and so needed in this world so thank you Kitty for sharing your wisdom and holding the space for all the others on this planet to do the same. Uh, that's a big mission. And uh, just kudos to you. Unfortunately, I have to put an end to this beautiful <laughs> conversation because I could, I've learned so much from you already. And you've helped me personally tremendously manifesting what I want to have in my life so that I can help people to do what they are doing, becoming the change makers in their lives. So 
from that end, um, it's uh, bless, bless from me in Iceland. Kitty, bye bye. If so, feel free to share the love and give us your generous review on iTunes, Stitcher or Spotify. And remember, you can always go to runamagnus.com and find out more about the changemakers and how we can help you driving the change you want to see in